Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Success Wealth. And what's hot in the moment at in the market is crypto. But you got to be careful. You got to know what you're doing. And if you are fortunate to make some money, you got to know what your liabilities are. And here at Success Wealth, we'll always encourage you to get professionals to who know what they're doing, who are experts in this their space, to guide you through your wealth journey. So today we've got someone really, really special, Adrian Forza from Crypto Tax Australia. Adrian's been in the space for three years, specializing in crypto tax. So um, him and his team are investors themselves, and this is all they do. This is their core business. So if you want advice about crypto tax, this is the person to go to. Adrian, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Look forward to um, talking, so it'll be good. Yeah, it is. Look, we, we tried to actually get together last about November, October, November, but you were so busy. The market was starting to move, but right now, compared to what it was then, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's a few months has made a massive difference in the um, crypto yeah. space. Yeah. yeah. And I can't believe you got time to do it for me right now, <laughs> to yeah, be honest. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the phones are off, uh, the, you know, I almost need to take the phone off the hook sometimes because it just doesn't stop ringing at the moment. And, uh, but it's good, you know, there's uh, uh, every cycle and new people come in to crypto they learn about it they they um they go down the rabbit hole which is which is always good to see there's a few people that drop off but there's always more that sort of hang on and then you know that, that we've got i guess if you want to call them veterans from the last bull cycle <laughs> and there's a lot of new people um coming in um i was speaking to the guys today at the firm and we were talking about how uh, in august of 2020 we had that big run there was sort of that DeFi boom and i think a lot of people got interested after that there was a lot of new people that came into the space after that because a lot of people that i'm actually speaking to now newer investors and it's a little bit different to a few years ago where people are actually thinking about tax ahead uh so we are talking to people now who are you know i've only got into crypto maybe six months ago but are thinking about okay well do i need to set up a structure you know i want to book in the consultation to talk you know what would be my my the tax that i um that I'm going to pay and, and advice and strategies about reducing it and all that type of thing. So pe people are, are now are um, planning a lot more than they were, say, three years ago, which is good to see. And, you know, we've already got consultations booked in for July because people are already sort of planning ahead about what they're doing and, and what their goals are. So I think the space is maturing, which is good. You've obviously seen uh, the news now with uh, Elon um yeah. and tesla um and all the institutional money coming in so it's great to see that and it's not the, the scam that people thought it was um mm -hmm. or the bubble that you know never came back you know it's come back with a vengeance really if you Absolutely. think about it even people that bought the top at twenty thousand three years ago you know if they've held on this they're, they're laughing now you know where their friends would have been telling them uh, that they were stupid for, for buying into crypto mm -hmm. and, and now they're sort of uh, they're, they've got the last laugh so it's good to see Absolutely. I actually know a couple of people who actually did that. And yes, they actually held through what we, we call um, crypto winter. They held yep. all the way through, yep. so which is incredible. So yep. um, they, they, they believe in the space and it's um, paid dividends, which is uh, mm -hmm. fantastic. But yeah, there, there are a lot of questions around structures and how to maximize uh, or minimize your tax and maximize your, your earnings. Now, I had a, uh, a quick call into the community and some of the questions that uh, came up, I would like to see what 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 do you think we can um, do with some of these uh, topics? So with the ATO themselves, if you go onto their sites, the information is quite thin. They don't really tell you too much. Just as an overview, are, are, are you able to explain how the ATO sees um, cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin? The, the first ruling, I believe, was around 2014, uh, mm -hmm. which talked about Bitcoin specifically. <clears throat> and they talked about it as a basically as a capital gains asset. And that's, I guess, the point in which uh, crypto obviously started to gain a little bit more traction. That was basically the only really guidance for a long time until the 2017-18 boom came along. And I, I remember it specifically that because uh, we started probably <clears throat> September, October 2017, uh, the firm, and uh, there was a lot of questions about tax probably in the March, April, May 2018 period. Um, and I think we did a couple of webinars to sort of help people out and, and give them some advice because a lot of the investors also uh, had never invested in anything before. So they didn't understand how capital gains works. There was a lot of obviously myths going around or, or, or you know, wrong information that people would, would 
would ask on social media and, and get advice on social media. So, yeah, so, so we, we hosted a webinar and then uh, I think it was literally two days before the end of the financial year, the ATO actually posted some information, uh, which I thought wasn't very nice of them uh, because then it only gave two days for people to, you know, maybe sell some of their assets down. Yeah, yeah. I guess essentially the nuts and bolts of how the, the how crypto or digital assets are taxed is if you've made a disposal. So a disposal can count as you selling the coin for another coin. So if you've purchased Bitcoin and you're swapping it for Ethereum, then that's a disposal of Bitcoin and you need to work out what your gain and loss is, a gain or loss uh, on that Bitcoin uh, sale. Another disposal could be that you are spending it on uh like a subscription or or an, or an item, a service, a good or whatever it might be, that's also a um, a disposal. So it's treated as a barter transaction. So if you're buying um, a computer, for instance, and you're paying with Bitcoin, so whatever, obviously, the computer costs you, that's how much the value is that you would have sold the Bitcoin for. Uh, there is a misinformation about uh when you're actually taxed so a lot of the, a lot of people think that it's only you're only taxed when you actually pull the money out into your bank account um that can actually get you into trouble because that's not how it works so it, it, it it's basically every single transaction whether you trade it into australian dollars us dollars ethereum bitcoin ripple whatever it might be uh, every single transaction, you need to work out the gain and loss, irrelevant of whether you've pulled the money out or not. So you could have bought um, $1,000 of Bitcoin um, and you've done 100 transactions in between. You could have you know, a potential gain of maybe 50000 if you're in a bull market, for instance, um, but you've, you've still just got, say, $50,000 worth of Bitcoin on your exchange or in your wallet doesn't mean that you don't have tax to pay um, because you haven't pulled it out into your bank account. So that's something that you you really need to remember mm -hmm. that you can pay um, tax even though you haven't pulled it out. So one thing I do say to, to clients is maybe do, do a check every few months or uh, six months or even before the end of the year um, or if you've made some profits on some trades, take some Australian dollars out to cover the tax or the potential tax that you may pay. Uh, because there has been times where clients might may have made money, and this and this happened in the seventeen eighteen bull market where they would purchase in um, uh, let's say August, and they'd make trade they they would make trades up and up and down up and down um, in that bull market. By the time July came along, they started with a thousand like ten thousand dollars. They ended up with a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. If they never sell that portion of their portfolio before the end of the financial year, they've still got that that. Um, you know, 90 grand of, of capital gains to pay, even though the value of their portfolio has actually gone down. Um, so that can actually uh, catch people out uh, dramatically, even though they haven't pulled the money out. Um, so hopefully that sort of explains. Um, it's, it's a bit of advice. Um, and yeah. that's probably goes similar to if you've been investing this year, uh, mm -hmm. to, do, to do the same. You know, we're in, obviously in a bull market now um, and to think about, you know, the tax planning side. And so, but every transaction, you got to um, figure out the Australian dollar um, equivalent Is that at that point. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. So it's not in Bitcoin value. It's not in US dollar value. It's in Australian value. Um, you know, irrelevant whether or not you've traded on a Australian exchange or, or traded on a, an international exchange. So sometimes you might trade um, Bitcoin for Ethereum. There's no Australian dollar value that you're trading it for, but you still need to work out what the Australian dollar value was at the time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So, well, a lot of it comes back to really good record keeping then. Um, definitely, definitely. And it can get messy in the crypto space in terms of it's multiple exchanges. You know, mm -hmm. you you've got bits and pieces everywhere like is there anything that you recommend in terms of record keeping and how how people can can best do it or um you know is there any tools or anything like that that, that may be able to help people um one thing i would say is make it uh, i guess a habit of downloading some of your transaction data every quarter every three months or so there has been times where you know clients have come to us two three years later uh to catch up on their tax and the exchange closed down and they can't get the oh. trading data 
So that, that's probably one. Um, obviously, keeping track of all the wallets that you might use. So you might have multiple MetaMask adra addresses or NEO addresses or whatever it might be. Uh, and, you know, that's obviously really important. Actually noting down which exchanges that you've used as well. There has been, I can't tell you how many times where uh, we've asked clients, we said to clients, look, I think you've got a KuCoin account. Um, and they sort of denied. And I said, no, no, I think you do. You should probably check. Uh, and they end up finding that they've still got money on this account that they forgot about completely. <laughs> so noting down which exchanges that you've that you've used uh, and, you know, keeping track. Would you do it on Excel? Look, un unless you've got a very, very small portfolio, yes, that could probably work. There are some tracking um, tools online. Uh, again, it's about how you use them. Are you confident in using that type of type of thing? Um, uh, it only sort of does half the work sometimes. So um, okay. that's something that we sort of specialize in, but you can have a go even for your own knowledge about where you may be, you know, in your portfolio as well. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a few online. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So um, can they use their self-managed super fund to invest in crypto? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, you can. Um, uh, so the short answer is yes. Um, you know, provided that you have a, uh, your investment strategy um, permits and um, you obviously need to look at the deed um, as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just making sure that it's been noted down. There might be a minutes of meeting and, and that type of thing. Uh, but yes, you definitely can. A lot of the Australian exchanges now do cater for self-managed super funds. Yeah. Um, they're very um, friendly for, for super funds. So you just need to provide them, obviously, all your documents. Uh, one thing I would say is uh, <clears throat> just obviously be mindful of, uh, you know, I can't give you financial advice, but just be mindful of, of, of your allocation into crypto. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. It's obviously still a risky and new new asset, so don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, you know, anyone would really tell you that. You know, you, you could you could add it as a, as a balanced portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Now, just leading on from that, so is there a demarcation or is there a difference between trading if someone who becomes active in trading um, crypto? Is that is there any difference between having trading crypto and having a crypto type business? Um, you know, is there anything uh, difference there? If I was personally trading versus yeah. starting up an actual structure for it, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, crypto is a little bit different to traditional stocks. This is my opinion, and this is from what I've gathered from 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 clients. Is that crypto? You you do a lot more transactions than you would normally do in say the stock market. Um, one because the fees, or well, most of the time, the fees are um, are less than say if you were trading on Comsec. Um, mm -hmm. The volatility is a lot higher. So there is a lot of uh, profit taking, buying new coins. Um, you know, there's, I don't know how many, 6,000 coins now, um, you know, to choose from. <clears throat> Traditionally, you'll see a lot more transactions uh, in comparison to a shared trader. That doesn't necessarily mean that you are a trader running a business, um, okay. in, in my opinion. So you could do, you know, 50 or 100 trades during the year. That doesn't mean that you are a trader for tax purposes. So you'll need to look at, you know, the regularity of it. Uh, how often um, are you trading? What capital are you putting in? Um, is it systematic uh, or is it sporadic? Um, you, you know, or, you know, what's the intention? Again, what is the intention? Intention for investing, which is long term, you know, you'd usually hold for a fair while. Usually it's the 12 months. So you can get the 50% discount on, on the gain. Trading is, you know, Again, there's different styles of trading. It could be a day trader, weekly, a swing trader. So again, it comes down to intention, your plan. The difference is that with trading, uh, you will basically account for your portfolio um, at the end of the year. So you, you'd account for it at, 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 <coughs> at the value at the end of the year um, uh, in theory. So if... Again, in theory, uh, as a simplified example, if you put in ten thousand dollars at the start of the year, and at the end of the year it was worth, you know, twenty-five thousand, and you're using market value to value the stock, then you'd be taxed on fifteen grand. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas if you're an investor and you've just bought ten thousand uh, dollars, and you're holding, and the price goes up and down, at the end of the year, if you haven't sold, you don't need to declare anything because you haven't made any gain. So that's mm -hmm. sort of the little the difference. It can work better for different scenarios um you know for example um if you bought bitcoin early 
you'd probably want to be treated as an investor for, to get that 50% discount if you've held it for a long period of time. A trader, um, again, you know, it'd be for short term. Uh, but you also need to look at which structure you've got set up um, and whether it's, you know, suitable to what you're doing. So should you be holding it in your own personal name, in a trust, um, in a company? What's your other income? What's your family situation like? That type of thing is what we sort of talk with clients about whether or not a structure is going to suit them. Sometimes it doesn't and we just say, look, leave it in your own personal name and, and, and as is. But yeah, it, it'll all depend on uh, you know, the person's cir circumstances. So Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one part of a holistic picture, I guess, um, mm -hmm. and very specific. That. <laughs> we, we've spoken a bit about trading, but with crypto, you, you can also be mining or doing other things that yield an income or, or interest, like, you know, staking, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, yield farming and things like that that you've mentioned before. Like, how's that treated? Is that treated any different? It depends on uh, the, sc the scale. So for proof of work mining, where you're actually using miners, um, again, it's going to it's gonna depend on how many miners you have. You know, if you're only, if you've only got a couple of miners and you're looking just to mine and, and hold long term, um, then essentially, you know, you only get taxed when you dispose of that asset. Whereas if you're mining as a business, so if you've got, you know, 10, 20 miners and you've got a mining farm and, and that type of thing, then it's really treated on what's called a revenue basis where uh, declare the, inc the, the, the income when you receive the coins. So that's how mining would be treated. Proof of stake where you're actually staking, very similar to say dividends. So if you're, you're staking, I know a lot of people are staking Cardano at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're generating an income. So it's sort of very similar to when you receive, say, a, a dividend from Telstra or something like that. Um, you know, then a lot of people would reinvest in that. And yield farming, it's probably a very long answer. It depends on the protocol. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of a hard one to answer, but it, do, it does depend on the protocol. Look, most of the time it's going to be on a revenue basis, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what you're doing. Have you taken loans out? That type of thing. Yeah, it's a hard one to answer. So yeah. it just depends. It depends. Um, answer. <laughs> so if you are investing into equipment and all that, is that a cost that you can deduct as a uh, a cost with your for producing that or producing that coin, or is that is that considered equipment? Uh, yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So if you've got mining, mining, obviously you've got to buy the rigs and the equipment. Yeah. Then. Uh, that will be yes, either a, a deductible cost if you're running a business, or you know it's part of the cost base. Other things like electricity, of of course, uh, which is obviously the big expense, will be the same thing as well. So yeah, that's that, that will also yeah, be especially the hosting fees it. and all that stuff. And, yeah. Correct. Yes. Yep. Well, we've covered most of the items on there. That's fantastic. That's so much information for the for the community there. Yep. Um, to get started to understand the space a little bit more and to understand the liability, you know, <laughs> uh, I think every single one of those topics can can, can go down so much further. And, oh, definitely. And like you know, we were discussing offline, you know, there's so many precedents that hasn't happened yet or is about to happen in terms of different mm -hmm. rulings about, um, you know, uh, cases that you're involved with uh, actually that um, we're going to find out how the ATO is going to treat everything. But right now, I think that the message is to get do a really good job, best you can, of um, keeping keeping records yep. nice, and clear, keeping the number of exchanges you're on, keeping records of your wallets, um, yep. do everything yep. in Australian dollars. Set your intentions from day one. If you're going to yeah. be a, a trader or investor, mm -hmm. and then Definitely. get someone like your firm to really map map out what the uh, what the road will be be like. Yeah, so I think. Um, uh, I think that's the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been good. Obviously, no one likes paying more tax than they need to. Uh, so, you know, the, another big message is obviously the planning beforehand. So, if you can plan, talk about, you know, what your intention is and what you're going to do moving forward, it, it can, it can, it can help you, especially when you're talking about different structures and things like that, um, depending on your circumstances. I know a lot of people have come to me recently and said, "Well, you know, I wish I did this a year ago." not now you know but people will probably be saying that in a year's time to me as, as well and said i should have done this a year ago so yeah it's uh planning for tax you know it's all about planning and timing to be honest so yeah absolutely and that's it that, that's that's the core of the message there if you're yep. planning to do something in this space plan it well so that you yep. know what you're up for and, and and so you can make the right decisions now and, and get things get yourself set up um, appropriately adrian thank you so much for your time buddy 
Um, that's so, that information is over valuable because we've had so many questions around the crypto space. Um, people just want to know more, 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 more. And it, there's so many changes. It's exciting. It's a um, revelation um, in, in a sense, technological one. And both, um, I, I believe it actually gives people financial independence from the system. Um, that's oh, something definitely. that I... Yeah, uh, that I, I really support. Yeah, uh, but they're also you've got to be careful in this space. Like you've mentioned multiple times, there's lots of scams and um, things going on in the or rug pulls, what they call it, um, in in the space. Mm. Um, yeah, so stay informed, get experts like um, Adrian and his team on um, to help you through and navigate so that you come out the other side winning. Now you can make, yeah, one of your coins may go through the moon, but you haven't set yourself up properly. Your your tax bill will too as well. So <laughs> very true. It's very true. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, Thank you so much, buddy. And hopefully no we can problem. catch up soon. And, you know, maybe in a few months and see how things have gone. And um, if there's been any interesting rulings that the ATO have um, put out um, yep. about um, anything in the space. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thanks for having me on. Cheers. Thanks, buddy. Great. Thank you.